I built a mobile app that lets you turn any object into a 3D model using Expo and Meta's Segment Anything aka SAM models. In this video I'm gonna break down what Meta's latest SAM models are, how they work and then I'll show you how to build this exact mobile app step by step so you can start creating your own 3D models from input photos. It's gonna be a lot of fun so let's dive into it. So first, let's talk about Meta's SAM models. Meta's SAM models, short for Segment Anything models, are a new family of AI vision models designed to understand and reconstruct the visual world in both two and three dimensions. At their core, these models perform image segmentation, which means they can find and isolate objects inside images by generating precise masks that outline every object you want to work with. Earlier versions focused on interaction segmentation based on clicks or boxes, while the latest SAM models can even handle text prompts to describe what you are looking for in an image, like a dog, an animal, or people. And building on this, Meta has released SAM 3D, a set of models that go beyond flat segmentation, which can actually reconstruct full 3D shapes. So there are two main variants of this model, one focused on everyday objects and environments called SAM 3D objects, and another tailored to full human body shape and pose reconstruction called SAM 3D body. We're gonna be using the SAM 3D objects model in our app later in this video. But first, let's examine how SAM 3D actually works. So with just a single 2D image as input, SAM 3D can infer the depth, geometry, and texture of objects and even entire scenes by producing 3D meshes. They can even extract full 3D objects if they are partially obscured in the input image. Well, not always actually. I'll show you what I mean later in this video. Okay, but how do these models actually do that? Well, first, the model feeds the image and the object mask through a vision encoder that learns what the object looks like and where it exists in latent space. Then they run that shape through a flow-based transformer that maps it into a set of 3D Gaussian primitives. And those primitives are then rendered using a technique called Gaussian splatting producing a continuous 3D structure that behaves like a solid object, but is actually a giant point cloud. That point cloud can then be transformed into a solid mesh. Meta actually has some pretty cool demo playgrounds where you can try the SAM 3D model for yourself and see what kind of results you can get. So what we're gonna be doing in this video is trying to recreate that same functionality inside a mobile app. So next, let's talk about how we're gonna build the app. So to create our mobile app, we're gonna be using Expo. Expo gives us all the necessary components we need for photo capture, segmentation, and 3D model visualization. We will host our SAM models on a remote RunPod container running on an A40 GPU. You can use something heavier like an RTX 5090 if you want faster inference. I just didn't wanna pay the high cost of hosting it. And we will create an API interface so we can communicate back and forth between our container and our app. So basically all our vision model operations will be offloaded to a remote RunPod container. Now, I'm not gonna go over the code in full detail because that would make for a very, very long video, but I've published the entire code base for both the API and the front end on GitHub. And I've also linked the repositories in the description below so you can go ahead and clone those repos and follow along. We will be using two of the SAM models for this project. SAM2 for object segmentation and SAM 3D objects for object extraction. Now you might be asking, why are we using SAM2 and not SAM3 for segmentation? Well, first of all, it's a good opportunity to test both generations of the model. And secondly, because as advertised, SAM2 focuses on one-click segmentation, where you can just click on an area and it will segment the object based on that point. Whereas in SAM3, they use a draggable box around the object, which is also cool, but I kind of want to test out the one-click segmentation flow because that just seems cleaner to me. So now let's set up our SAM models. In RunPod, the first thing I'm gonna do is spin up a fresh A40 GPU instance. In the template settings, you will wanna increase the container disk size because I noticed that the entire project takes up about 50 gigabytes of space, but just to be sure, I will set it to 100 gigabytes. 
And don't worry about it because disk space is cheap on RunPod. It's the GPU cost that you're actually paying for. And then I will also expose it to port 8000 because we will use this as our API interface. So with that configured, let's go ahead and deploy our pod. Next, let's copy this command and SSH into our pod. And the first thing we wanna do is clone my API project. Once you've done that, CD into the project directory. Now, before we do anything else, make sure that you have a Hugging Face account with a valid access token set up because we will be downloading the SAM models directly from Hugging Face. They might also ask you to provide your contact information to get access to the SAM models, but the request approval is usually pretty fast to get. Once you've gotten all that, you can proceed to run these first two lines as outlined in the setup. And this will download the Hugging Face CLI and authenticate you. Hugging Face will then ask you to input your access token, so just copy paste that in the command and you should be good to go. And folks, I've made this super, super easy for you. You just need to run this single command to set up the entire project. And this script will install everything you need and you better get cozy and go make yourself a coffee because the full setup takes about 15 minutes to run. And this is mainly because the SAM 3D objects have a ton of dependencies it needs to install and set up. And don't blame me, I just copied all the instructions outlined in their setup file. And boy oh boy, it's a massive setup. But once you've gone through all of that, you should now be ready to run your app and launching the API is super easy. You just need to run uvcorn API column app with the host of four zeros and the port of 8,000. And if this is the first time launching it, Hugging Face will go ahead and download the SAM2 models and then proceed to launch the server. And if you're seeing this message, that means you have successfully launched the API server. And we are now ready to move to our next step, setting up our Expo app. So for the front end side, it's gonna be a lot easier. You just need to clone my front end repo and then run npm install and then launch the app by running Expo. The only change you need to make here is at the top of the API TS file, change the SAM API base variable to the URL of your RunPod container. You can find this by simply clicking on this button on RunPod and it will open up a container URL in a new browser window. So be sure to copy that and replace it in the api.ts file. So now that we've finally set up everything, let's go ahead and test our app on the simulator. So first let's choose an image from our gallery. So I'm gonna try to segment this dog. And if we click on its head, you can see that it has been segmented, but just partially. Whereas if we do the same thing on Meta's playground, you can see that it successfully segments the whole dog. And this is one thing that I kind of don't like about these playground demos. This kind of segmentation with the beautiful outline and everything, this is not the functionality that you get out of the box with Sam 2 as you would expect. Even their own demos don't work the same way as in the Meta's playground. But that's okay, we can still use it effectively to mask out our desired object. I just need to add additional more points to segment a larger area of the dog and we should be good to go. But here's what is actually cool about the SAM 3D model. Although the dog is obscured in this image, this should be enough for the model to understand the whole context and still produce a full 3D dog model. And the generation will take roughly a minute or half to finish. And this is because I'm running this on an A40 with RTX 5090 or any other beefier GPU, you would probably get faster results. And I have absolutely no idea what kind of state of the art GPU are they running on the Meta's playground, but their object generation is lightning fast compared to my peasant server. But anyway, the generation is done and we can now see that Sam 3D has successfully created this lovely 3D dog model and it successfully filled in the obscured parts of the object as well. What you see here in the app is a generated GIF image of the model rotating around. The process itself does generate a full GLB file of the object as well, but I did not include a 3D viewer here in the app. So instead, I made an endpoint on the API titled assets list. So if you visit that page, you can see and download all the generated files of the models you just segmented. And if we open the model in a 3D software like Blender, you can see that it has done a pretty good job. Albeit it's a bit low on resolution and detail when you zoom into closely, but it's impressive nonetheless. 
You can easily use this technique to generate some low poly game assets for a video game or a 3D scene. So I tested this model with a bunch of different images like this old car for example and the results were really really good. In terms of understanding the whole object within the context this is a really big step up from SAM 2. So I will commend them on this. The SAM 3D objects model works really really well and the obfuscation compensation is really really powerful. It successfully filled in the details of the car and the dog although the objects were partially obscured in the photos. But can we push this to the limit? Well as I mentioned earlier it does not work perfectly every time. So I tried running it on this little squirrel image and I only highlighted the head and the results of the test were interesting to say the least. I mean you can see that the model tried to add some hands and feet but the proportions were totally wrong and it looks more like a Pokemon rather than a real animal, which is cute in its own way, but this just shows that good segmentation is still necessary if we want the models to output actual good results. I did a couple of more tests with items I could find around the house and overall the results were very, very good. I noticed that the model was struggling to reproduce things like labels on a camera or any other text label for that matter but the object shapes and proportions were correct for the most part. I also took the app outside to create some 3D architecture models and I even managed to create a nice little 3D model of the CN Tower of Toronto. So there you have it, that's how Meta's segment anything models work in action. If you want to dive deeper in detail how the segmentation works and how the UI sends the data to our API, check out the full code base on both of the GitHub repositories. Links are provided in the description. So what do you think about these Meta's new AI vision models? Have you tried them? Will you use them in your own projects? Let us know in the comments down below. And folks, if you like these types of long technical tutorials and you want to see more of them, let us know by smashing that like button underneath the video and don't forget to subscribe to our channel as well. This has been Andres from Betterstack and I will see you in the next videos.